we've been talking about the Great Commission for the past weeks, three weeks, and this is uh, the great cause that Jesus Christ um, that we are to be involved in as believers because ito po yung commandment na binigay ng Panginoon bago siya umakyat papalangit na iniwan sa kanyang mga disciples uh, and He commanded them to do until He returns. So from the disciples then, uh, during Jesus' time, up until now, us who are disciples of Christ and until the Lord returns, Christ expects us to to do this, fulfill this commandment na binigay niya sa Matthew chapter 28, 19-20, and that is making disciples of all nations. And as we have emphasized uh, since the beginning of this year, as we desire to expand the territory of God, we want to focus our attention on making disciples because that's how we expand the Lord's um, territory. It's the expansion is an expansion of disciples of Christ. Amen? We want more people to become true disciples of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's why this year, uh, our, our prayer is that we would reach more souls and bring them to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you would remember, during our anniversary last February 3, uh, we men I mentioned the word multiplication. Right? Uh, our prayer and our desire is that the Lord will multiply the number of His disciples. Okay? Although we're not just simply focusing on quantity, but we also want quality. Right? But if there's quality, quantity will what? Will follow. Okay? So we don't just want to make uh, a lot of disciples. We want to make true disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we want to multiply ourselves and that's why the challenge for us is that each one would reach at least one this year. Amen? Narinig niyo ba sa likod? Malinaw? Okay. Baka sabihin niyo din naintindihan yung message eh. Okay? So each one would reach one this year. Sabi mo sa katay mo, did you reach one already? Yeah. Okay? So that's the challenge. Okay? And ang prayer natin is that lahat tayo ma-involve dito sa napakagandang cause na binigay sa atin ng Panginoon, making disciples of all uh, nations. Amen? Do you want to be involved in disciple making? Amen? Amen? Sino ang gusto maging involved? Taas ang kamay. Okay. So far, and so far we have been studying some qualities or characteristics that we need to have so that we can be able to make disciples of all nations. Alala niyo yung una, ano yung una? In order for us to make disciples, we must first be what? We must first be available. Why? Because our effectivity in making disciples begins with our what? Availability. You cannot make disciples if you are not available. Right? So, dapat lahat tayo sasabihin natin sa Panginoon, Lord, I am available wherever you lead me. I am willing. I'm not just willing, but I am available I'm willing to respond to your challenge and make disciples of all nations wherever you lead me, whether I am at work, I am at home, I am at play, or I am in my community, or whatever I do, whenever there would be an opportunity, Lord, I'm here, I'm available, and I'm willing to, to respond. Okay. And then last week, we learned about what? Being ascentive. Okay? Ano yung ascentive? Hindi ba pag nagbebenta ka, merong ano? In incentive. Hindi yun, ha? Ascentive. Pag sinayo mong ascentive, ano ibig sabihin nun? Ha? Yielding. Okay? Submissive. It has that the idea. Alright? So as Christ disciples, we must be fully submissive to Christ so that whatever He says, okay, we will do. It's because when we are fully obedient and submissive to Christ, I doon natin may experience yung power ng Panginoon. It is the Lord who what? Empowers us. You see, making disciples is not an easy task. And we would learn that this afternoon. That's why we don't rely on our own strength. Pastor Boy mentioned that earlier in our devotion as well. We rely upon the power of God. Right? Tama? Tama. Okay. 
So what do we do in order to experience that power that comes from the Lord? Well, we need to what? Pray. Amen? Kasi sabi natin, prayer what? Releases the power of God. Power is already available to all believers. Jesus Christ said in Acts 1.8, But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So when you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit now dwells in you, and you now have that power that comes from God through the Holy Spirit. But it doesn't mean that it will be what? At your disposal right away. Okay? You need to pray so that that power would be at your disposal. Amen? So you must be present and you must be praying if you want to make disciples. Are you praying? Okay. Ang challenge natin last week was 5.30 a.m. Sino sa inyo ang nakakagising ng 5.30 para magpray. Okay, that's good. Okay. Yung iba, 5.30 matutulog. <laughs> okay? Uh, sino sa inyo ang, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't know. Okay? I was praying and I was hoping that last Monday, as far as our attendance sa ating prayer meeting is concerned, ay medyo ano, kasi nung the Monday before that, ay 29 tayo. So sabi ko, isa na lang, marireach natin target natin na 30. And in-emphasize natin nung, pray, nung Friday na dapat pray talaga tayo, no? Pero last Monday, 23 lang ang umatend. Anong nangyari? Okay. Uh, although I don't know what uh, the reasons why we were not uh, available during that time and we were not uh, uh, able to pray but it's somehow it's somehow alarming I'm not I don't know because right after hearing the Word of God and the challenge uh, presented to us eh parang mas lalo pang wag na lang tayong mag challenge sa uh, prayer na no? para maten lahat no? parang ano pa parang bumaba yung ano yung attendance natin sa prayer meeting okay Remember the word devoted, they were devoting themselves to prayer. The idea is that in spite of the challenges that the disciples encountered during that time, they still committed themselves steadfastly to prayer. Okay. And it's alarming for me because we cannot be a disciple-making church as uh, we cannot be a disciple-making church unless we also learn how to pray. Right? Because there's power in prayer. Disciple making is not just any ordinary task that anyone can do. It's, it's designated to Christ's disciples only. And unless we have the power of God at work in us and through us, we cannot be really effective in making disciples. Okay? So that's why, dapat po bilang mananampalataya, tayo ay ano? Let's be serious about making disciples let's be serious about our prayer life as well so that uh, may experience natin yung power ng Panginoon gusto niyo ba talaga? Okay. sabi pag gusto pag ayaw dahilan okay. so anong ano ba? ano bang gu anong gusto natin mangyari? Diba? this coming March 31 as uh, announced earlier uh, the EDM is trying to work out a program na kung saan it would be easy for us to adapt and to share uh, the, go the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ so that we can make disciples of all nations. Okay? So we're trying to think of a program na kung saan everyone and anyone can say, well, ito, mag ito yung program. Well, I can do this. I can make disciples of all nations. Right? We're trying to make it as simple and as strategic as much as possible. Okay? Kaya yung EDM staff ay medyo... Pag may nakakalbo na kayo nakikina dyan, baka sa sobrang kakaisip na. No? Pero, no matter how much adaptable or easy a program might be when it comes to evangelism, if we're not really serious about it and if we, we would not spend time in prayer, I think it would be useless. Right? Tama? Okay, so that's why uh, the challenge for us is that we should not take this lightly. It's, sabi sa kanta, it's a great cost. And as believers, it's something that we should be willing to live for and even to die for. 
eh, kung if we cannot live for it, how much more can, how, how can we die for its cause, right? So in order for us to die for the sake of Christ, to, to, to lay down our life for the sake of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must learn first and foremost to live for it. So wherever the Lord leads us, ay dapat we should be disciple makers and share the gospel to others. Okay? So I hope and pray that as a church and as believers, as Christians, um, we will be serious about this great commission because when Jesus Christ commissioned the disciples, he was not joking around. He was serious about this. And he was concerned about the whole world. Ang usapan dito ay ano? Kaluluwa. Di ba? Kaluluwa ng mahal natin sa buhay. Kaluluwa ng kaibigan natin. Ano pa? Kaluluwa ng kahit yung mga hindi natin kakilala. Okay? It's a serious business for Christ. That's why as believers, we need to uh, take, take it seriously as well. Now in our study this afternoon, uh, I would like for us to see how serious to Christ disciple making really is. And I'm, my prayer is that um, as disciples of the Lord, we would also be assertive or serious sa ating disciple making. And that's the third point that I would like to emphasize in this series. If you want to make disciples of all nations, we must be assertive. Okay? So una, ano yan? We must be? We must be? Available ulit. O na, pa, ulit ulit dapat kasi. Iba. <laughs> available, available. Okay? And then pangalawa? Assentive. And then pangatlo dapat ano? Assertive. Now, ano naman ibig sabihin ng assertive? If you are assertive, what does that mean? Well, the dictionary defines this word as confidently aggressive or self-assured, aggressive or dogmatic. So, an assertive person is someone who, who is having or showing a confident and forceful personality. Okay? So when we say that as disciples of Christ, we must be assertive in our disciple making, it means that we must be confident to make disciples. We must not be ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, as, as the Apostle Paul said, and we must be aggressive at the same time, okay, in leading others to Christ. Okay? Assertive. Na, may kilala ba kayong tao na assertive? Usually, yung mga nagbebenta na may komisyon, assertive masyado yan. Di ba? Parang, minsan pag, boss, I would present to you something, libre to, walang bayad. Okay? Tapos pagdating na sa, okay na boss, maganda ng product, no? Okay? Bili ka na. And usually, hindi ka iiwanan hanggat hindi ka napapa-oo. Mamaya, Wait, wait, I'll call my friend. He will come. Okay? He will explain to you further what, you know, the payment, etc., etc. Okay? Usually, mga taong yun, ano, assertive, na minsan, kung hindi ka rin assertive, anong mangyayari? You would end up buying the product. Right? And when the, and the, when the salesperson leaves, you would realize, nayari yata. <laughs> Napabili ako ng hindi oras na hindi ko naman talaga kailangan. Okay? Now, when it comes to disciple making naman, I don't, I don't mean that as believers, we would aggressively force the gospel to other people, especially to the lost. Okay? That's not the idea. Okay? What I'm trying to point out is that, in using this word, is that as believers, we need to, be stop, we need to stop being complacent. When it comes to disciple making, we need to stop being passive about disciple making. Marami kasi, most of the times, we are complacent and we are what? Passive. Pag sinabi mo passive, ano ibig sabihin nun? Ah, pag may, sige, pag may program, sige, subukan ko, try ko. Sige, attend ako. Okay. Hanggat hindi mo pinupush, ay ano? Wala, wala, walang mangyayari. Okay? So, but as believers, rather than being passive or complacent, Dapat intentional tayo, active tayo, and um, uh, aggressive tayo, excited tayo, especially when we talk about discipleship or disciple making. 
Okay? Dapat serious. Tignan mga katabi mo, serious ba? Uh, serious. Serious masyado, hindi gumingiti, ano? Baka serious na, baka serious sa uh, pagtulog, ha? Okay. Now, this afternoon, we'll try to answer the question, why do we need to be assertive when it comes to disciple making? Okay? Um, there are two things that we would like to, I would like to emphasize here, but probably we'll just look on the first one and the last one next week. But let me just remind you that if you look, open your Bibles to Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. Dapat kabisado na natin to, no? Sino nakakabisado na? The Great Commission, Matthew 28:19 to 20. Ready, begin. For God so loved. <laughs> okay. In the beginning, God. Ano ba? Ano sabi? Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Okay? So that's the Great Commission. Now, uh, we have emphasized over and over again that the command in the Great Commission, in verse 19, is not go, but what? Make disciples. Okay? That's the main verb in the passage, make disciples of all nations. And if you look into the word, it's in the imperative mood. Pag sinabi natin imperative mood sa Greek, it means it's a command, right? So Jesus Christ here is not making a request, but He is making a command. And the command is make disciples of all nations. Okay? Now, I would like for us to look into this command because as we consider this command, the word, okay, we would see why we need to be assertive as disciples as far as our disciple making is concerned. Now, I've said there's two things, there are two things that we would see here, but let me show to you the first one this afternoon. What can we see here about the command, making disciples? Well, number one, it is a what? Ano sabi dyan? It is a clear command. Okay? Sabi nyo nga, it's a clear command. Pag sinabi natin clear, malinaw, or it's a simple command. Okay? And what's the command all about? Okay? It's all about making what? Disciples. So Jesus Christ is asking us to make what? Disciples. Right? It's as simple as that. Okay? The Great Commission is about making what? Disciples. Right? So if you want to obey the Great Commission, you must make what? A disciple. So when we say to you, reach at least one this year, yung one na yun ay anong gagawin natin yun? Dapat yun ay maging ano? Disciple ni Jesus Christ. Tama? Kasi yun yung target natin, yung goal natin make disciples can qualify lang what kind of disciples well of all nations so walang ano walang walang limit okay now if i would ask you what is a disciple of jesus christ what would you say okay what is a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is your definition of a disciple of Christ? Okay? Now, why is this important? Mahalaga to kasi if you don't have an idea of what a disciple is, you don't have an idea what making disciples is all about. Right? Tama? Eh kasi gusto mong gumawa ng disciple, pero, sige, gagawa ako, pero wala ka palang idea, ano ba yung disciple? How can you make disciples? when you don't really know what a disciple of Christ really is all about. So we need to have a clear description and definition of the word a disciple. And this is probably the reason why many Christians 
are not involved in disciple making because when it comes or involved in the Great Commission, it's because they don't really have a, a clear picture of what they are going to do. They don't really know what a disciple really is all about. Probably in the first place, they don't, they're not sure if they are a what? Really a disciple of Christ or not. Iba? They don't have that definite description of what it is to become really a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, this afternoon, we will try to have a clear and biblical definition of, a, of the word disciple based on Matthew chapter 28, 19, and 20. And I hope and pray that as we establish that definition, that first of all, we would realize and recognize that, praise the Lord, I am a true disciple of Christ. Amen? And as we make disciples, we, we have a clear idea, oh, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to make as I obey the Great Commission, make disciples of all nations. Do you want to, know, do you want to have that definition? Amen? Okay. Now, before we go into that, I'll give you about less than a minute. So far, what's your definition of a disciple of Christ? Write it down. I want you to write it down. I'll give you less than a minute. If someone would ask you, Ano ba yung disciple ng Panginoon? Anong isasagot mo? Write it down. Kung wala kang may sulat, sipo, ano ka ba? Sino ka ba? If we say that we are a disciple, I am a disciple of Christ, then what? Ito ako. Okay. Tapos na? Oh, hindi kayo nagsusulat. Okay. Kung wala kayong ball pen, pen, madami tayo doon, isasoli nyo lang kasi po hindi yan souvenir. <laughs> okay? Kung wala kayong notebook, ay meron tayong faith journal. Okay? Para lahat ng uh, pinag-aaralan natin ay nakatabi po siya. And anytime you need to go back and review principles and truths, ay pwede nyo po, madali nyo pong makita siya. Okay? Okay na po? Sino ang may de definition ng disciple? Taas ang kamay. Taas. Okay. Yung iba? Google pa? Okay. <laughs> Sige. Okay. Now, Let's go, let's look into Matthew 28, 19 to 20. And there are three qualities that we would find here in a person who is a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And those qualities na makikita natin dito sa Matthew 28, 19 to 20 are introduced to us or suggested to us by the participles that we find in this passage. And if you look into Matthew 28, 19 to 20, ay meron pong tatlong participles dyan. Okay? Sa English translation language, ang participle ay may ano? Usually ends in, the word ends in ing. Okay? Hindi omg ha? ing. Okay? So, meron po tatlong participles dyan. Ano yung nakikita nyo? Okay, there's baptizing. And then ano pa? Teaching, and ano yung isa? <laughs> Missing. <laughs> diba? Missing, di nyo makita, no? Okay? So, number, first is baptizing, there's one. Teaching is one. But the first one, in English, ay hindi masyadong, yung translation ng English natin ay hindi siya masyadong clear. Pero if you look into the Greek language, it's the first word that you find there. Go. Okay? Maraming nagsasabi po, ang command dyan sa Matthew 28 ay ano? Go. But it's not really go, make disciples. Go is an aorist participle. And a better translation for the word, for that word, poreutentes in Greek, okay, is having gone. Okay? So, having gone, 
make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Okay? So, okay, remember dito po, ay anong ginagawa ng Panginoon sa kanyang mga disciples? He was what? Commissioning them. And when you talk, that's why it's called the Great Commission. Okay? Pag kinomission mo ang mga disciples, ni Jesus Christ ang mga disciples, anong ibig sabihin nun? He was what? Sending them. Okay? Kaya ang sabi ng Panginoon, I commission na all authority is given unto me. Okay? Verse number 18. Therefore, having gone. And remember, we talked about the disciples during this time were already fully yielded to Christ. So he no longer needs to command them go because he knew that they would what? Go and make disciples of all nations. So that's why Jesus Christ said, having gone, okay, sabi niya, make disciples of all nations. So during this time, the disciples were sent by Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, what is involved in this stage na kung saan the disciples or us are commissioned by Christ or sent by Christ. Ano bang nangyayari kapag pinadala tayo ng Panginoon or kinumission tayo ng Panginoon? What happens in this stage? Well, look at Romans chapter 10, verse 13 to 15. Okay. You would notice in verse number 15 that the word sent was mentioned there. Okay? And remember, when, when we talk about commissioning or great commission, it involves being sent. Okay? And verse number 15 says, How are they to preach unless they are sent? Okay? Now, if you go back to verse number 13, let's, uh, if you, let's read it. Verse 13 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How are they to believe in whom they have not heard? How are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? Okay? So makikita natin dito yung sequence na ginamit ni Apostle Paul from verse number 13 ay parang ano? Pabalik. Paatras, di ba? Na kung saan, dumating sa point na sabi niya, yung word na sent. Okay? Now, if we would put ourselves in the feet of the disciples dun sa Matthew 28, when Jesus Christ sent them, so from being sent, anong gusto ngayon gawin ng Panginoon natin? We must what? Verse 15. Preach. Di ba? Bakit natin kailangan mag-preach? So that people would hear. Why do people need to hear the good news? So that they would believe. What happens when they believe? Ano sabi dyan? Verse, 13, verse 14. They will what? Call on the name of the Lord. And what happens when a person calls on the name of the Lord? He will be saved. Okay? So, what Christ wanted was that when He sent His disciples, He expected them to what? To preach the gospel. They're not just simply to go out, okay? The first thing that they need to do is to preach the gospel so that people would hear the gospel and when they hear, they would come to know Jesus Christ and believe in Jesus Christ and uh, verse 14 says, they would call on the name of the Lord for the salvation of their souls and when they call on the name of the Lord, the Bible says that they will be what? They would be, they would be saved. Okay? That's the first, uh, sabi natin, stage of disciple making. Having gone. And as we go, anywhere, na kung saan dinadala tayo ng Panginoon, araw-araw man yan, sa mall man yan, sa trabaho natin, sa bahay natin, sa community natin, or wherever, okay? Christ expects us not to be silent about the gospel, okay? 
but we must be preachers of the gospel so that people would hear the gospel and eventually they would believe in Christ and they would call on, on the name of the Lord. Okay? So, based on this one, ano ang first characteristic ng isang true disciple? Kaya sabi, make disciples. First step, having God. Anong gagawin natin sa, sa first stage na yun? Okay. Well, when we make disciples of all nations, this is what Christ wants. He wants us to have, to preach the gospel to the other, to, to the lost, so that they would have the assurance and security of what? Salvation. So that they would be saved. Tama? Okay? So in other words, if you want to make disciples, the first quality that you want to see in a person is that he or she must be first what? Saved. He must be a true believer. Kasi, ano sabi, how can you be saved? Believe in Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Okay? So, what is a disciple? A disciple of Jesus Christ is a believer of Christ. Hindi porki nag-invite ka ng isang tao sa church at umaaten sa church Regularly, disciple na siya. You're, you made disciples already. First thing you must make sure ay dapat yung tao na yun ay ano? Believer. Yun ang goal natin. Tama? Hindi lang yung attendance. Ang goal natin ano? Believer dapat siya. Dapat saved. Yun yung pinaka-importante. And they cannot be saved unless we what? Preach the gospel. Gets? Yeah, that's why we have our Discovering Life. Okay, that's what Discovering Life 1 really is all about. Okay? And uh, as we launch yung Witness to Win, March 31, we will also equip you on how you can use yung Discovering Life natin so that you can also uh, share the gospel to others. Okay? So, first quality of a disciple, uh, a disciple must be a what? Believer of Jesus Christ. Save. Okay? Now, the second quality of a disciple is found in the second participle in the passage. Matthew 28, verse 19. What is the second participle? Okay, baptizing. Okay, so Jesus Christ is saying that after you preach the gospel to someone and that person believes in Jesus Christ as his or her personal Lord and Savior and is saved, the next thing that you need to do is to what? baptize that person in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's why baptism is important in the plan of Christ of making disciples of all nations. Mahalaga yung baptism. Um, it's because baptism, as we, you would also learn this in our Discovering Life too, baptism proves that a person has truly believed in Jesus Christ. It's, it's a proof Nat yung tao ay talagang ano, believer, mananampalataya at talagang ligtas dahil na nampalataya siya sa Panginoon. We always say that baptism cannot save you. It's not a means unto salvation. But it will prove that you are saved if you would follow the Lord in water baptism. Okay? You cannot separate baptism from a true believer. As a matter of fact, if a person claims that he is a believer and doesn't want to be baptized, ayano, parang question mark. Okay? Why? Because, for example, what is baptism? If you take the analogy of the relationship between a husband and wife, which is the illustration that Paul used in Ephesians chapter 4 or 5 about our relationship with Christ, okay? Sa relationship ng husband and wife, yung vow and acceptance ng groom and ng bride during a wedding ceremony, what does it do? It establishes their relationship as husband and wife. Tama? Hanggat hindi kinakasal ang isang lalaki at isang babae, hanggat hindi, hanggat hindi sila nagmimake ng vow and they did not, do not accept one another in holy matrimony, wala yung relationship na yun, it does not exist. Right? 
But the moment they do that, in the sight of God, in the sight of men, they are now husband and wife. Sabi nga natin, mahiwaga yun eh, di ba? Okay? So that's the relationship. Now, the same thing is true when we accepted Christ. Right? Mahiwaga yun. Nung tinanggap natin ng Panginoon, na-establish yung relationship na yun. That's why we say that, ano, salvation is a personal relationship. Okay? We accepted Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. We surrendered our life to Him. And that relationship was established. Now, sa kasal naman, balik tayo sa kasal, okay, to prove the sincerity of your vow and commitment to that relationship that you have just established, if you're the husband or the wife, ano yung symbol na usually ginagamit to represent that marriage? Yung ano? Ring. Di ba? Yung sing-sing. Di ba? Sasabihin ng pastor or nagkakasal, uh, hindi, hindi yun. <laughs> Bago yun. Okay? What is the symbol of your love and commitment to, to the bride or to the groom? Sasagot, you know, no? uh, kiss the bride ka agad. Your, the ring. Okay? Kasi yung ring ay symbol ng relationship. Tama? Kaya pag may nakita po kayo na tao na may wedding ring, anong isip nyo? Married. Yari. <laughs> Sayang. Sayang, ano? Married siya. Kasi may, ano, may symbol. Di ba? It's a symbol that that person has a relationship with someone. Okay? Now, if you take that analogy, yung baptism, it's just a symbol that you have, a person has a relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay? Kung ikaw, ayaw mong ikahiya na Kung itinatago mo na married ka, hindi mo isusot yung ano? Wedding ring. Di ba? Ha? Ano na? Pag ano, kapag nasa party, oops. <laughs> Ayaw mo kasing malaman ng iba na ano? Married ka na. Okay? Now, if you're a Christian, sabi nga natin, dapat ipaalam mo sa iba na ano? May relationship ka sa Panginoon. Huwag mo ikahiya. Kasi baka balang araw, sabi na ba, ikahiya ka rin niya. Tama? So, para maipakita mo sa mundo that you are a, a believer of Christ and you are a disciple of Christ to prove to them that you identify yourself with Christ just like a ring identifies a husband to a wife and vice versa. You identify yourself with Christ through baptism. Every person that is baptized means that he is what? a believer of Christ, and he is a follower of Jesus Christ. Okay. Kaya kapag hindi ayaw magpabaptize ng isang tao na sabi niya, believer siya, question mark, bakit ayaw mong ma-identify yung sarili mo with Jesus Christ? Okay? So, that's how we make disciples. So, after being saved, ang goal natin dapat sa disciple ay ano, uy, magpabaptize ka. Okay? Huwag mo ikahiya na believer ka ng Panginoon. Uh, yan ang goal natin. Okay? As a matter of fact, if you look into the scriptures, I, in the book of Acts, the day itself that people were saved or believe in Jesus Christ, that day mismo, they were being baptized. It's inseparable sa buhay ng isang Kristiyano. So we don't just introduce people to Christ or we don't just introduce Christ to people we also identify them with Jesus Christ. Okay? Through, through baptism. And that's the second quality that we can see here of, what a, of a true disciple. A true disciple of Jesus Christ is not just a believer of Christ, but is a what? Baptized believer. Okay? Baptized believer dapat. Oh, save na yan. Okay na yan. Disciple na yan. Nakamake disciple na ako. Next. Dapat ano? Baptized believer. Eh, pastor, hindi naman nakaka-save pala yung baptism eh. eh ba't kailangan pa eh? Sabi ni Lord, kasama sa program niya eh. Di ba? 
Eh, yung thief naman sa cross, hindi naman nagpabaptize. Save naman siya, di ba? Ang gusto mo, ikaw yung... <laughs> Sige, magpapako ka doon para hindi ka na kailangan ipabaptize. Yeah? Pero kung nabuhay yun, for sure, ano? Papabaptize yun. Di ba? Because he's a true believer. So, second characteristic or quality of a true disciple is he must be or she must be baptized. So when we make disciples, yun ang goal natin. He must be a believer first, then he must be a baptized believer. Amen? Okay. Thirdly, ano yung third participle? Teaching. Verse number 20. Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. So after a person believes, after a person is baptized, he or she must be what? Taught. Okay? Now, anong dapat ituro sa kanila? Dapat turuan silang ano? Ano sabi sa verse? To observe or to obey. So we don't just simply teach so that people will be informed. We teach them the commandments, all the commandments of Christ. Dahil ang goal natin ay ano? They would obey. Kaya nga sabi ko nung kanina, nung after preaching on prayer, at parang mas lalong bumaba yung attendance natin sa prayer meeting, medyo alarming. Kasi ang goal natin ano? To obey. We teach to obey. So dapat, we must be ano? We must respond and obey the Word of God. So when we talk about discipleship, it involves teaching the disciples of Jesus Christ to do or to obey the commandments of Christ. Okay? And we are to teach them to obey not just some, but sabi dyan, ano? All. Kaya yung teaching is a lifetime process ng isang disciple. A true disciple is a learner. A lifetime learner and follower of the commandments of, of Jesus Christ. Now, saan natin makikita yung commandments ng Panginoon? Dito. Di ba? Tama? Sa, sa salita ng Panginoon. So in other words, we, as we cannot separate baptism sa buhay ng isang tunay na disciple, we cannot also separate the Bible from a true disciple of Christ. Tama? Kaya sabi nga natin, kung disciple ka ng Panginoon, tas wala kang Bible pag Friday, anong ginagawa <laughs> natin. Di ba? We're not here to entertain. We're here to study the Word because yun yung commandment ng Panginoon. Because we are disciples of Christ. We want to follow Christ. And we want to obey the commandments of Christ. That's why nag-aaral tayo ng salita ng Panginoon. Okay? Kung wala kayong Bible, sabihin nyo sa at gusto nyo magkaroon talaga, hindi nyo alam kung saan kumuha, sabihin nyo sa amin. Bibigyan namin kayo. Study Bible, ganito kalaki. Tapos dadali nyo lang every Friday para <laughs> libre yun. Sagot ko <laughs> na Meron po tayong makukunan sa DECC, may Christian bookstore po dyan. Okay? So, in other words, the Word of God is, is, is inseparable in the life of a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Okay? And where do we study the Word of God? In the context of the what? The church. Right? That's why Jesus said, Christ said, I will build my church. Because the, the teaching ministry happens within the context of the local church. That's why as the Bible and baptism is inseparable in the life of a true Christian, a Bible-believing and a Bible-teaching church is also inseparable sa buhay ng isang tunay na disciple ng Panginoon. Tama? Okay. Kaya we always say, kapag may tayo sa Panginoon at mababaptizean siya, sasabihin natin, humanap ka ng church na isang church na nagtuturo ng salita ng Panginoon, Bible-believing and Bible-teaching church, para doon ka maturuan ng commandments ng Panginoon para masunod mo yung mga utos ng Panginoon sa buhay mo. Okay? Because that's what a disciple really is is all about. Okay? 
Kaya yung disciple na ayaw ng church, uh, questionable din yun. Okay? Kasi wherever you look in the scriptures, the church is always a part of the life of a true believer. Okay? That's why the third quality of a true disciple is this. He, he or she is a he or she is committed committed to a bible believing and a bible teaching church not just a part but committed kasi unless you are committed to a bible believing and bible teaching church you would not be able to observe all that Christ has taught or commanded us to do it takes commitment Ito lang, yung pag-Friday worship celebrations, okay? malaking tulong to sa pag-aaral natin ng salita ng Panginoon, yung preaching ng salita ng Panginoon, right? Uh, nalalaman natin kung ano yung will ng Panginoon based on His Word, and ang goal natin is what? To obey. Prayer meetings, pag may fellowships tayo, okay? yung mga, pag may couples fellowship, singles fellowship, okay? kasama lagi yung ano, Yung pag-aaral ng salita ng Panginoon, hindi nawawala yan. Okay? Kasi mahalaga yan. And that's what we do here at uh, sa church natin, sa Faith Baptist International Church. Okay? Why? Because we are making disciples. Amen? Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, we are making disciples. Kaya minsan may mga activities tayo, marami tayong activities. Lahat ng yan, part yan para ano? Masulod natin yung Great Commission, making disciples of of all nations. Okay? Now, we don't have much time siguro to discuss this. Uh, sa mga susunod, may mga ilang bagay pa tayo siguro madidiscuss. But based on those three qualities that we have discussed from the three participles mentioned here in Matthew 28, 19-20, can you come up now with a biblical or more a deeper definition of a disciple? May idea na kayo? Ha? Huh? O wala pa rin? Okay, sige. I give you 30 seconds based on what you have heard this afternoon. Try to come up with your definition of a disciple before I give my definition from our study. Ayun na, pinag-aralan na natin. Pinanggit ko na kanina. Pagduduktong-duktongin nyo na lang yun. Mas, mas maganda kasi yung Alam niyo ba't ko kayo pinapasulat? Yung learning process, mas mariritain sa isip niyo yan. So, kung talagang gusto niyong matuto at mag-aral, eh, sulat, sulat niyo. Di ba sa school, minsan, yung teacher pinapasulat lang, tasulat lang tayo. Well, may, may purpose din yun. Okay. And mamaya, sa so sharing time, when you share it, mas lalong mariritain yun sa inyo. Because when you teach it to others, then it becomes more meaningful sa inyo. Okay na? Okay? Sige, hindi pa tayo tapos ha? I'll give you my definition. Okay? What is a true disciple of Christ? A true disciple of Jesus Christ is a Bible-obeying, baptized believer, committed to a Bible-believing and Bible-teaching church. Malapit ba dyan? Close? Uh, that's good. All right? Basahin nga natin sabay-sabay. Ready? Begin. Now, first question. Are we disciples of Christ? Are you a, ano yan? Bible-obeying, baptized believer, committed, to a Bible believing in Bible teaching church. Hindi naman sa ano pero I I believe FBIC is a Bible believing and a Bible teaching church. Amen. Yeah. Uh, kung hindi, okay, lipat na lang tayo sa iba. Diba? As much uh, by God's grace, we uh, we stay true to the very purpose why this church was established. Okay? being true to the Word of God. As Baptists, we believe that the Bible is the sole authority for our faith and practice. So, priority natin ang salita ng Panginoon. Okay, so, and that's what we want. As we make disciples, we want to make, we want to produce 
Bible obeying baptized believers committed to paiksi na FBIC. Di ba? Who is a which who is a Bible believing and Bible teaching church. Amen. So alam niyo na kung anong gagawin natin. Ito. Okay? David Platt said, making disciples by going, baptizing and teaching people the word of God, word of Christ. And then enabling them to do the same thing in other people's life. Okay, this is the plan God has for each of us to impact the nations for the glory of Christ. If you think about it, ito lang yung ito yung pinakagusto ng mangyari sa atin ng Panginoon, individually as Christians and corporately as a church. Make disciples by going, baptizing. And what? Teaching. That's how we make disciples. You see, we are not just a club. Alam niyo yung club? Or any kind of organization na, oh, nag, kasi, bakit kayo nandyan? Sa Dubai kasi, malungkot. Walang outlet. So at least may church, may ano, may time na medyo makatawa-tawa ng konti, makarelax, may activities. Para may iba naman. Ganun ba? Ganun lang ba tayo? No. We are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? We don't want to be a fan club of Jesus Christ. But we want to be the church, the church of Christ, consist, who consists uh, of followers, true followers and true disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Ang prayer natin maging Great Commission Church tayo. And that our members will be Great Commission Christians. Amen? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, be a Great Commission Christian. Huwag niyong tanggalin yung C ha, baka be a Great Omission. Be a Great Commission Christian. Oswald Smith said, at any church that is not seriously involved okay, in helping fulfill the Great Commission has forfeited its biblical right to exist. So in other words, if, we're not, if we would not be seriously committed to disciple making, then let's stop what we're doing. Papagod lang naman. Yeah, minsan nakakapagod, no? hirap hirap kumanta dito sa harap mag mag set up ng instruments uh, di ba et cetera et cetera e kung hindi rin pala natin gagawin yung gusto ng Panginoon eh tigil na natin to kain na lang tayo sa labas tama let's make it personal if any christian that is not seriously involved in helping fulfill the great commission has forfe forfeited its biblical right <laughs> Parang may, medyo mahirap to exist. In other words, if we say we are Christians and we are not fulf helping fulfill the Great Commission, may problema. We are now outside the will of God. Because what Christ wants for all of us is to be seriously involved in making disciples of all nations. Amen? Serious na kayo, no? Sabi ko nung anniversary natin, praise God for the 52 souls na pinagkatiwala sa atin ng Panginoon. Start from the very beginning of our ministry up until nung anniversary natin. Okay? Uh, we were able to make 52 disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? They were baptized believers. And I hope that they are committed to a Bible-believing and Bible-teaching church. Kasi yung iba ay wala nandito sa Dubai. Okay, iba, bumalik na sa Pilipinas, etc. Okay? Pero yung nandito pa sa Dubai, tapos hindi nyo nakikita, bahala na kayong mag-isip kung anong gusto nyo isip. <laughs> okay, but so far, as far as our record is concerned, ay 52. Salamat sa Panginoon. Amen? At least kung haharap tayo sa Panginoon as a church, sabihin natin, Lord, may 52. Uh, hindi kami zero. Hindi bokya makakaharap tayo sa Panginoon. Amen? Okay. Now, this year, ang prayer natin ay ilan? 
Ilan yung meeting natin? 70. Ang gusto ni Brother Imon nga, 100 eh. Uh, di ba? Pero we agreed upon, sige, 70. And that means, sakto lang yun. If each one would reach at least one, if each one would make at least one disciple this year, then we will be able to what? To meet that target. Amen? By God's grace. And if ever we would face the Lord this year as a church and even individually as Christians, wala sa atin ang pwede para mahihiya na humarap sa Panginoon kasi at least ano, may nadala, may nadala tayong isa sa Panginoon. Amen? Okay. Gusto nyo ba yun? Ayaw nyo ata eh. Okay. Uh, that's why sa EDM po, I were trying our best to come up with a program that would help us Make disciples of all nations. So please do pray for us as well as we finalize the details of that. Uh, but sabi ko nga, no matter how transferable or user-friendly or adaptable the program might be, it will be meaningless unless we become serious about making disciples of all nations. Uh, David Platt again said, By God's design, He has wired His children for spiritual reproduction. In other words, if you're a true believer, you have that desire in you to reproduce yourself and make other disciples of Christ. He has woven into the fabric, fabric of every single Christian's DNA a desire and ano yan? ability to reproduce. So we all have that desire and we all have that ability to reproduce. Amen? That's why we have the Spirit of God in us. Ano lang problema? Although may desire, may, may ability, pero hindi ibig sabihin, ano, we would already reproduce instantly. Anong kailangan natin? Una, dapat available ka muna. Tama? May ability ka nga, pero kung hindi ka available, wala rin. Pangalawa, ano ka dapat? May as, as, yung ascent, yung fully yielded to Christ. Ready to obey. And then pangatlo, assertive. Medyo, ano, seryoso pag pinag-usapan yung business ng Panginoon. Disciple making. Okay? And that's, what we, that's our prayer. All of us will become disciple makers. Amen? Not just a disciple, but a disciple maker. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, let's be a disciple maker. We'll close with this. Principle, it takes an earnest Christian to do the Great Commission. Ano yung earnest? Yung seryoso. Yung porsigido talaga. Kasi kung hindi ka porsigido, kung titignan mo yung process, parang medyo mahirap. Preaching pa nga lang, di ba? Sino, sinong nadadalian sa preaching the gospel? <laughs> ano di ba? Pero kung sabi nga natin, kung gusto, may paraan, pag-ayaw, Maraming dahilan. Amen? The concern of, for world evangelization is not something tacked on to a man's personal Christianity which he may take or leave as he chooses. It's, brethren, it's not an option. All of us must obey. and must be serious about it. It is rooted in the character of, God, of the God who has come to us in Christ Jesus. Thus, it can never be the province of a few enthusiasts. Ang gusto natin sa church, hindi lang yung may lima, sampu na enthusiastic sa soul winning. Gusto natin ano? Lahat. Amen? A sideline or a specialty of those who happen to have a bent that way. Hindi lang yan para sa EDM or for special people. It is the, what? Ano sabi dyan? Distinctive mark of being a Christian. Siguro, dagdag pa sa description natin sa disciple. Ano yun? A true disciple of Jesus Christ is a Bible-obeying, baptized believer, committed to a Bible-believing and Bible-teaching church, and who is also a disciple maker. So he is not just a disciple, but he is also a what? Disciple maker. Amen? 
So we don't want just to be disciples. We want to produce disciples who would become disciple makers also for the glory of God. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, uh, salamat po sa paalala mula sa inyong salita. Uh, we have heard so many preachings on the Great Commission. And ito pong pinag namin probably is just a review uh, ng marami naming narinig ng messages already. But we pray, O oh God, that as you have clearly commanded us to make disciples and you have laid out, Panginoon, yung mga dapat naming gawin, and we know that it's not going to be easy, but I pray that you would stir up into our hearts that earnestness, Panginoon, to be involved in the Great Commission. Because unless we become serious about it, ay hindi mo rin kami magagamit, Panginoon. Kaya dalain ko, Panginoon, na pagpalain niyo po ang puso namin ang bawat isa, excuse me, bawat isa na nandito, Panginoon. Stir up in our hearts a heart for the world so that we would become a disciple-making Christian in a disciple-making church. Bless the truths into our hearts today, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.